All righty. Thank you guys all for joining us. Uh, it's great to be here with you again. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Patrick. I'm on the marketing team for the Star Wars fan team at Hasbro. Yep. And uh, my name is Eric. I'm on the design team uh, for the Black Series at Star for Star Wars. Awesome. Cool. And we will we will dive in. Obviously, as uh, as uh, uh, Deanna said, we've got uh, 40 minutes, uh, so we want to make sure to get to all the questions and and answer them as thoroughly as possible. So. We will dive in. So up first is uh, Jake from uh, from from Forlom to Zuckus. It's always a tongue tire, I know. <laughs> uh, well, thank you guys again for allowing us to have this opportunity. It's always good to talk directly with you guys and uh, Absolutely. You too. get some information from you now that we're, of course, not seeing you at conventions like we normally do. I know. So our first question here we have, um, we really enjoy the concept of the pipeline reveals. Now that Hasbro has started to give collectors a preview of things to come for 2021, uh, would you be willing to give us a hard count of the number of uh, vintage collection figures and vehicles planned for this year? Um, this could be done much like that graphic you guys have brought mm -hmm. to conventions a few years ago and uh, where you revealed like the figure's name next to the card back um, throughout the year. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, you're right. We did do that a few years ago. I, I think kind of in all things, we, we try to strike the balance of obviously, you know, providing kind of visibility to what's happening, uh, as long as we're, you know, 100% confident it's going to happen and not kind of create frustration down the line. Uh, I do remember with that graphic, you know, things change, obviously, like it's, you know, February, you know, December's a long way away. And sometimes things shift, uh, especially near the end of the year or beginning of the year back and forth. And so I do recall with that graphic, I think things changed and maybe were a little less than we had said. And, and there was some frustration and obviously, you know, collecting is a, a fun hobby. We never want to create that frustration. So uh, glad to hear you like the pipeline reveals. Basically those characters, we are, you know, we're, we're confident we're going to do them. That's why we pipeline revealed them. Uh, they might be later in 21. They might be early-ish in 2022. Uh, we didn't want to kind of pin that down again because things change. Uh, so I think at this point, we wouldn't, we wouldn't want to give that hard number just because what it is right now might change in several months. And again, we don't want to create that frustration and maybe any confusion if people are seeing an outdated graphic, you know, several months later. Uh, so I think that's the thinking there. But, but if you guys do like the pipeline reveals, again, that's something where we were like, you know, we know we're doing these figures. It's just a matter of when. There's no reason we can't reveal the identities, even though we don't have product. And so if that's something you guys like, you know, let us know, uh, you know, have your readers let us know, because uh, it's something we could consider doing again in the future. Awesome. Great. Cool. Um, all righty, up next is Dan from Star Wars Collector. Yeah, thanks for having another Q&A with us. Um, Thank you. So these questions are from our readers, not me personally. So don't take it personally. <laughs> we, we know there's a rough question coming up when you say that. <laughs> so why does it always seem that Walmart has issues with exclusives? They take pre-orders pre just to cancel them and a very small amount gets released to the local stores. And also when is the three newly announced Walmart exclusive vintage collection figures supposed to go up for pre-order or yeah, be so available also. in stores? Yep. Uh, so I'll answer them kind of in reverse order, just because the specific questions uh, easier to answer. Yep. Um, so, so in terms of those three figures, uh, as we said on the live stream, you know, we're and this gets to the the larger answer. You know, we, we didn't pre-order those on the live stream. We'll we'll take a more selective approach to that moving forward. Uh, they might be pre-ordered at some point in the future. Uh, if they will be, uh, you know, we will do everything we can to make sure that the pre-order experience is smooth. Uh, which again is, you know. We didn't feel confident in that uh, on January 29th, which is why we didn't do it then. We'll also announce it in advance so it's not kind of a surprise that they go on pre-order since the figures are already revealed. Uh, in terms of when they'll be available in local stores, uh, it'll be you know later this spring, early summer. Again, we try not to put a specific date on it because things can change and we don't want you know anyone watching the calendar for a specific date and then they, they don't come then. Um, in terms of the larger issue, you know, we, we had a similar question on some earlier interviews. We're, we're aware of it. You know, I said this on under, other interviews. We're all fans of Star Wars. We all buy the product as well. Uh, many of us are also fans of other brands at Hasbro that we're not, you know, on the team for. And so we go through literally the same process of, you know, trying to figure out when things will be on pre-order, ordering them, you know, getting the packages. And so we're we're aware firsthand of, of what you guys are going through. That said, it's still very valuable to hear from you guys. Uh, and so we understand that frustration. Uh, I can say we're, we're actively having discussions and meetings to try to figure out what those issues are, where they are in the process. 
Um, and I know that's easy to say. It is true. We're, we're all on the same page here. Like it, it doesn't benefit us for these issues to be having. It doesn't benefit anyone. And so we're doing everything we can to work through them and kind of get to a better place in the future. Um, you know, as I look four or five years in the past, there were different issues that we've been able to solve out a little bit. And so, you know, just, just stick with us and we'll, we'll try to keep working towards those solutions. Cool. Thank you. Absolutely. All righty. Up next is uh, Jose from Endor System. Hey, Jose. Oh, sorry. I think you're on mute, Jose. Are you going to include the Lucasfilm 50 anniversary logo on all the products you sold in 2021 or only in the figures that you consider part of the 50 anniversary line? In the Black series, it's quite clear which figures will include the 50 anniversary logo. But in the vintage collection, how would you decide which figures include the logo? Yeah, you're right. Technically, every product we do is part of Lucasfilm's kind of first 50 years of history. Um, so as you can kind of see on that timeline on the back of packaging, for the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary, we really wanted to focus on kind of those big milestones that were big kind of, you know, pivotal moments in Lucasfilm's history, you know, as we see it through the Star Wars toy line. Uh, and so we're not going to capture everything under it in 2021. It'll really be kind of these specific programs that highlight those, those pivotal moments. And so obviously, as we said on the live stream, the original trilogy is certainly one of those. And there will be some specific uh, programs tying back uh, to the original trilogy, like the original Kenner Deco, like bringing original Kenner figures into the vintage collection. Phantom Menace, obviously, Star Wars Return to the Big Screen. So that's another one of those pivotal moments. So it'll be those programs, and we'll always be very specific about it, announcing what is and isn't part of the 50th. Thank you. Absolutely. All righty, uh, Victoria from Victoria's Cantina. Hi, good morning, guys. Great to see you. Um, so you kind of already sort, sort of answered this with a building off what Daniel asked, um, but what action is being taken regarding the whole Walmart uh, situation with them canceling pre-orders and relisting things the next day for triple the price? Um, to streamline that process, are there any specifics you're working on? Uh, in addition, uh, are there any assurances that you could possibly make going forward on exclusives that they will be available in some other manner, be it Hasbro Pulse or the fan channels? Uh, that way you kind of take away some of that uh, anxiety that collectors often get when they can't yeah. get something or their pre-orders are canceled uh, or eBay starts shooting up and people start paying it because they're worried they're not gonna get the toys. Um, what can you speak to regarding this? Yeah, so I have four thoughts in my head. Hopefully I'll, I'll remember them all. But the first is just, again, reiterating that that we hear the frustration, we understand it, we feel it as well. And so it's not like we're just kind of separate from it and, and don't care. Like we do, and obviously for, for many reasons, we, we want that frustration to go away. Um, I'm trying to remember my four points. Uh, the, the second one is in terms of specifically kind of uh, retail exclusives going to other channels. Uh, that's not currently in the plans. Obviously, kind of anything we announced as a retail exclusive will be exclusive to that retailer. And honestly, kind of that item wouldn't exist if it weren't for that retailer. Uh, you know, the fan channel, they can only do so much. Um, generally, uh, we are addressing this, as I mentioned. And in terms of specifics, I mean, the, the action to not pre-order some of the items on the live stream, that was a specific step that we took. Obviously, it's different than what we've done in the past. And it was because we felt that the pre-order experience in that case would not be as smooth as we would otherwise hope. And so again, they might be available for pre-order later if we feel confident that it will be a smoother process, we'll announce in advance, or they could just, you know, like, like we used to do for, you know, 38 years of Star Wars history, they could just be available, you know, online and in store when, you know, when their on-shelf date comes and, and hopefully that would alleviate some frustration. So that's a specific thing we're doing. It's not all we're doing. And so hopefully we'll see more improvements in the future. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All righty. Uh, B, B, is it B or is it uh, Brandon? I'm seeing it there. Uh, well, Great. B Brandon is for, from Rebel yeah, Scum. Yeah, B is for Brandon. So either there we go. Fine. <laughs> um, I have a, a graphic, uh, nerdy graphic design question for you. The best um, uh, we, we noticed on the packaging for the new Kenner Deco program figures uh, that they have the Star Wars logo centered, which matches the original Kenner design. This differs from the offset design used on the Kenner styled A New Hope 40th anniversary figures from a few years ago. Why the difference? So at least for obviously to your point, um, the the characters that were really that we just revealed uh, last week. Um, 
those uh we wanted to take inspiration from those original packaging Mm -hmm. um some of the other when we when we translate um a uh three and three quarter inch packaging up to a six inch package uh sometimes there are some changes that have to be made uh whether it is uh because of the graphic or it doesn't necessarily fit entirely right sometimes the proportions slightly change um it was something that uh especially for these characters uh the ones we just recently revealed um it it just we didn't run into very many of those issues and we were able to pretty accurately recreate it um it was i I can't speak specifically to um the decisions that were made on on the previous ones um but there there are some unfortunately some concessions we have to make uh when blowing up the scale of these things from three and three quarter up to a six inch that makes sense cool awesome all right uh i'm gonna try to keep us moving along more quickly somehow our first round of questions we we just kind of enjoy them uh we enjoy (laughs) them all but i will have to move a little more quickly to get them all in so uh jake what's up next for you all right i'm going to show my age with this one back to the 90s when they used to do this um with the recent release of the tan t4 hallway and the carbon freeze chamber play sets collectors have found the need to get more troop builders What is stopping Hasbro from considering multi-packs of just like stormtroopers and rebel fleet troopers or others like clones or battle droids of some of your, uh, you know, three and three quarter sculpts, you know, Rogue One stormtrooper. Uh, This doesn't uh, need to be anything fancy, just like a white mailer that we could use for like diorama building and world building. No, it's it's an interesting idea. It's something we've definitely discussed. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, certainly, obviously, there are in-pack vintage collectors uh, who that packaging is kind of, you know, sacrosanct and, and valuable. And then there's obviously, we know that one of the strengths of the vintage collection is the world building and that ability to build out environments and displays and, and dioramas like the play sets we've offered. And so uh, it's definitely something we've talked about and something we could see in the future. Cool. Cool. Awesome. All righty. Uh, Dan, you're up next. Uh, what's going on with all the exclusives? Can you guys just produce general releases? It's so hard to obtain exclusives sometimes, especially at Walmart. Exclusive once in a while is okay, but lately it seems like every other figure is an exclusive. Yeah, we've said this before, and I think if you look at mainline, our mainline offerings for, uh, you know, both vintage and black series, obviously vintage over the past few years, black series for longer, but they, they maintain pretty much at the same number. Uh, Black Series has been, you know, I think as low as 18, I think in 2018 and, you know, as high as 24, but it's generally been in that range. So, so I don't think we've seen a shift of characters from mainline to exclusives. And, and in fact, when you throw in the deluxe figures, like we, we might even have more, the exclusives, and this is just the honest truth, like they really are a bonus, like they are figures that we are able to do that, that we just honestly wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Uh, because kind of there is a, a limit to what we can do in mainline. Um, so, so I think obviously they're they're kind of a key part of that that relationship uh, with our retail partners. Um, and again, we wouldn't be able to provide them all otherwise. So I, I think as we think about it, we're like, you know, obviously, you know, everything in mainline could be one way that we would go. Uh, but but we just can't do all of that uh, that we want to in mainline. And so this is basically a way to get uh, additional items out there to the fans that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And we think that's that's valuable for the fans. Sure. Thanks. Absolutely. All righty. Up next, uh, Jose, what do you got for us? Thank you. As you're celebrating Lucasfilm 15th anniversary, did you plan to sell products from other franchises like Indiana Jones or maybe older Star Wars projects like Ewoks and Droids? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, obviously, like it goes without saying that Eric and I and kind of the whole teams, uh, we're, we're super excited to be working on the, the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary and obviously kind of celebrate that whole timeline. You know, right now uh, we're focused on kind of celebrating that through uh, Star Wars, obviously in Star Wars toys. Uh, you know, as always, we don't have anything else to reveal uh, about other properties within Star Wars, uh, like you mentioned Ewoks or droids or other uh, IPs, uh, you know, could happen in the future, but right now we're focused on Star Wars. Thank you. Absolutely. All righty, Victoria, you're up next. So we're really excited about the new Ahsoka and Maul. They look fantastic. They look they look stunning. Um, and it seems like demand for Clone Wars uh, and the Vintage Collection both uh, seems to be really high, um, particularly with the Clone Wars that um, 
just across the board seems to be doing really well. Um, so building on the announcement of those two figures, uh, have you considered going back into the vault uh, for the Clone Wars as you did for the Celebrate the Saga sets when you focus on the five POA figures uh, to bring some of those animated uh, figures back out into the market? Uh, some of them are very expensive now in the secondary market. And uh, since the sculpts already exist, uh, it could be a great way to possibly get out those characters back uh, for new fans and for old fans as well. Yeah, no, it's again, it's interesting. It's something we've discussed. And, and you're right, Clone Wars, like, you know, season seven just blew me away. Like, obviously, I was excited for it to come back. But that last four episode arc, especially like that was like that was movie level right there. So it was it was an awesome conclusion to an awesome show. And and obviously, you know, as you saw last year and with the announcements, like we're continuing to, to celebrate that in both lines. Um, you know, in terms of the, the animated figures, uh, it's certainly something we could consider. Uh, you know, it's something we've talked about. Uh, I think, again, we always try to strike the balance of, I, I think elsewhere in this uh, uh, conversation or in one of the other interviews, the question was like, why so many repacks? And so, so it's kind of that balance of which are the right figures to bring back out, whether it's the Celebrate the Saga sets that you mentioned, or, you know, some repacks for the Phantom Menace Black Series line, or some repaints for the original Kenner Deco figures. Uh, it's that balance we try to strike between having, you know, new tooling and kind of that, uh, those uh, repacks and repaints. Um, but but it's definitely something we've discussed and you know something we could see in the future. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, back to Brandon. Um, <clears throat> were there discussions on making uh, Mace Windu's lightsaber blue to match the original figure? Is that a Lucasfilm decision? Um, there there were uh, just a few discussions internally, um, and unfortunately, with uh, in that first movie, you obviously didn't see his lightsaber. The first time you saw it was in. Um, uh, attack of the clones it, it was one of those things where we this is a departure from that original release but it's mainly because now he has a specifically designed <laughs> lightsaber with a unique color on it um it, it wasn't necessarily like a lucasfilm decision or anything like that it was just one of those things where now because he has a specifically designed saber in that original packaging it was just kind of a made-up saber to add with him um uh to have it in there it, at least it just uh, it, it felt a little bit like a disconnect to have it be not that original color, or not the uh, purple color, um, especially since uh, we didn't necessarily change anything else on the other characters in particular. Um, we wanted to still maintain that or original release of the Black Series version. Okay, yeah, thank you. No problem. All right. All righty. Back to the top. Jake, what do you got for okay. us? Question number three. Would Hasbro consider returning to the ways of the past by releasing full waves of figures that are dedicated toward a single source or media property? Um, and if not, what is the reason? Because currently there are four scales to balance. Uh, none of them provide fans the full, or collectors, the full range of characters. For example, Dark Ray is released in the Black series, whereas uh, the Tie Whisperer is released in the Mission series. And Ahsoka and the clone and her clone are from season seven are released in six inch in Galaxy of Toys, but their enemy, the Maul, is released in, from season seven is released in the Vintage Collection. And Zero uh, from the Mandalorian is being released in six inch scale, but the vehicle he drives is released in three and three quarter. So merging. Are you saying you want a six inch scale razor crest? Is that <laughs> what I'm hearing here? You mean, like, we wouldn't buy it, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's a, a good question. I think all of those scales that you mentioned, like, you know, obviously on the fan side, there's Black Series and Vintage Collection. And, and you know, there's a lot of fans we know who are fans of both. Um, the fans who are just fans of one or the other might wish for the other one to, to go away, but obviously they would never want their own to go away. Um, and then on the kids' side, like, Galaxy of Adventures is kind of our, our main way to... To bring figures to kids and it's based on a lot of insights about what kids today are looking for in their figural play um, but then obviously kind of at all these scales you know vehicles get large even in the vintage three and three quarters inch scale obviously again razor crest like I, I can tell you honestly the only way we were ever going to do that was through haslab uh so mission fleet and you know our ceo spoke to this earlier this week uh that that did great for us last year and so that was a way to bring vehicles back to kids uh, because vehicles are so important to Star Wars. So I think, you know, I love Star Wars. Star Wars is unique in that it has kind of this long history. And so these kind of different play patterns and a strong fan business, but also a kid business. So 
I think, I think there's a key purpose for all of those lines. Um, in terms of which characters come to which line, you know, obviously, you know, as you said, Ahsoka uh, from season seven released in six inch, but we just saw her released in vintage collection as well. And so I think we're trying to get the right characters kind of in, in all of those scales. And I think you'll see kind of more in the future and black series and vintage are only getting stronger. And so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll hope to see more of those characters in the future. Okay. Cool. All righty, uh, Dan. Uh, the 50th anniversary logos on the packaging seem a bit large and kind of take away from the appeal of it. Um, are most of them removable stickers, especially on the Best Buy Black Series Kenner inspired figures? Will the stickers be able to be removed easily without yeah. removing it? It's a printed? mix of, yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. Or are they printed? Uh, so it's a mix. Uh, some are stickers on the blister, some are printed, and that's basically based on kind of how, how large the blister is and if it allows room for a sticker. Um, you know, in terms of the logos, we our, our brand design team is fantastic. They kind of went back through the history uh, and kind of used that as precedent. And I think the other thing is, I again, I'm, I'm a collector, I'm a fan. I, I kind of like having these different things uh, throughout the history of my toy lines that, that I can kind of mark the passage of time and say, oh yeah, that's when this event happened. That's when that promotion happened. So I, I, I like the way our team kind of worked them into the overall aesthetic. Um, so, so we like the way that they turned out, uh, but obviously, as always, you know, let us know what, what you and your readers think, and, and you just did, and you know, it's certainly something we can look at in the future. Great, thanks. Absolutely. Uh, Jose, you're up. If the Black Series Kenner styline is a uh, full success, would you consider recreate in the near future the original three three quarters Kenner style figures? in the six inches scale like other companies did as Gator Giant with his Jubo collection of 12 inches? Yeah, no, it's, again, it's something we've talked about and kind of like what I said earlier about kind of the different permutations, like it's definitely something we could do, right? We could take that retro and put it up to six inches. Uh, it's something we've talked about. Uh, it's a cool idea. And, you know, there's just, there's so, so many different options to choose from. And kind of as Jake said, there's, we already have these different lines. And so that would be another one. So it's finding that balance of, of what would be cool for the fans without kind of splintering further. But it's definitely, it would definitely be cool. Cool. Uh, Victoria, you're up. So on Fan Force Friday, you guys announced a new uh, indoor Leia for Vintage Collection. And uh, that's an original, nine, original 96 uh, figure that we're really in need of and excited to get. Um, but she has sparked some uh, comments and uh, discussion similar to Darth Revan a few years back. Um, because we really wanted Revan, we just didn't want that version of Revan. Revan. Yep. And it's kind of the same thing with Andor Leia because she does have a new head, um, but uh, she is from 2007 and uh, she doesn't quite hold up to the current level of vintage collection. Um, for example, she doesn't have the wrists. She needs to ride the speeder bike and it's a little tricky to get the current one to do that. Um, and, you know, this is a, like I said, an original 96, it's a critical character. Um, you do have some figures in your inventory from many years ago, background characters mainly that could be slapped in vintage cards today and look gorgeous and you know probably do very well. Um, but I just wanted to see if you could speak to why the choice was made for not to base the, the new Endor Leia off the current Black Series, fantastic, perfect um, Princess Leia and Endor gear uh, and instead utilize one from uh, a long time ago. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you're right. Obviously, we, we recently sculpted that Leia for Black Series. Um, tooling is obviously different for the line, so, so that's a consideration. Um, I think also as we kind of looked at uh, the Leia and Revan, uh, as we looked at Revan and we heard that feedback, uh, there was kind of no way that our team could figure out to, to kind of tweak that Revan to make him, him better uh, without completely newly tooling him. Uh, whereas Leia, you know, as you mentioned, there were some improvements that we could make to bring her closer to that definitive status. And then there's also the fact that kind of getting her on that vintage card back for the first time uh, was part of that original 96 drive, uh, whereas Revan wouldn't be. So that's kind of the differences we saw in the two of them. Uh, basically, it comes down to if we kind of tooled up a new Leia, it, it would take a spot from something else that was newly tooled in the line. Um, and as we looked throughout the line, we, we really liked all the figures we had in there that were newly tooled, like them all, like the Ahsoka, uh, like the Moff Gideon armor uh, that we did earlier in the year. And we just wouldn't sub any of those out. And so this was kind of uh, a way to get that layout out with an improvement uh, on a kind of 
vintage car back for the first time where we otherwise just wouldn't have been able to do that. So it was kind of, it was a bonus as opposed to uh, being something we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Gotcha, thanks Patrick. Absolutely. Um, Brandon. Um, as part of the Lucasfilm 50th program, will we see other classic packaging design tributes such as the blue 2002 era saga or 2005's Revenge of the Sith design? Yeah, uh, all, all cool ideas. Uh, you know, again, we can't say what, what we'll be seeing in the future, but uh, I'll just say kind of a high level again, kind of Lucasfilm 50th, it is kind of those major milestones in both the, the Star Wars entertainment uh, and also in the toy line. And so, uh, you know, without saying what's coming, those those are cool ideas. And um, we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll see something like that or similar to that, uh, but we'll be celebrating those milestones along the journey. Well, hey, thanks for thinking it's cool. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, all right, back to the top. Uh, we're going to have to go a little speed round here. So Jake, uh, fourth question, what do you got for us? As a huge Kenner era fan, we want to thank you so much for the fun Kenner deco program you have with the LFL 50th Black Series figures and continued support with the retro collection and the commitment to the original 96 collection. Now, with all that being said, there are still so many characters from the original trilogy that have yet to be done in the vintage collection. Uh, we have the Bespin Escape Leia, like Victoria mentioned, uh, I think earlier, uh, that's coming later this year. Is there room for more um, in the line for more new OT characters to debut? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, you saw in the pipeline reveals one of these with uh, F5 Lando, uh, you know, finally uh, making his appearance in the, the vintage line, which is fantastic. Um, I, I think, again, in all of this, it's balance, right? So. So we've got a certain amount of figures we can do. And obviously Mandalorian, you know, I, I read a lot of uh, posts and a lot of comments about uh, fans, you know, of both scales wanting kind of more Mandalorian because obviously that's that's doing so well and it's such an amazing property. Um, so I think there's that. Obviously there's also the original trilogy, you know, as Victoria mentioned, you know, we're trying to get some Clone Wars out there. So I think it's balancing across, but I will say you, you have not seen the last of the uh, original trilogy figures in the vintage collection for uh, 2021. And that includes both uh, some meaningful updates, but also some newly pulled figures. Awesome. Absolutely. All right, Dan. Uh, there's some, some rumors that we would see the 2019 San Diego Comic-Con 40th anniversary Black Series Retro Boba Fett figure re-release because there's a demand for it, but there was no reveal in the 50th uh, live, live stream. Is this in the works or was it just the rumor? Um. It, at the moment, that was just a rumor. Um, yeah. We, yeah, because we haven't uh, revealed anything. Uh, like, obviously, we can't speak to anything that uh, are either just rumors or anything that we personally have not uh, revealed or announced. Um, yeah, it, it, it was just a rumor. Okay. I think that might have started when we did our archive fan vote. I think uh, it was open source, obviously. And so I think some people put that on the list. But mm -hmm. yeah, that that's just a rumor. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Jose, you're up. It's almost the same question that Brandon did. It was to know if you are going to include any other old car collections like Power of the Jedi or Power of the Force style cars. Um, to, to Patrick's points earlier, um, the the Lucasfilm for like the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary, uh, as we showed on um, the timeline, kind of celebrate milestones of Lucasfilm and Hasbro and just our celebration of uh, Lucasfilm and Star Wars in general. Um, so while we can't specifically say what else might be coming in the, uh, in the 50th collection in that line, um, we will have more things that we're going to be showing as the year goes on. And like we said earlier, we want to celebrate uh, certain milestones um, as shown on the timeline. All righty, I think uh, Victoria, you're up. All right, so on Fan Force Friday, you announced new Paplu. Uh, he looks really fun. Uh, however, on the card, that actually is Romba, and uh, we. It seems like you probably just based it on the Kenner card, which you know was incorrect to begin with. Um, but instead of correcting that, like you did with um, Snaggletooth, uh, who Zutton is coming out pretty soon, um, you made a change to that one so that it did reflect the correct character. So. I'm just wondering, is there, are there certain parameters or is there a certain canon that you have for yeah. uh, how you handle these situations or is it more of a case by case basis? 
Yeah, it's interesting. I think as as we approached it, uh, we we were doing the Zutton figure, uh, not kind of the original Snaggletooth figure. Um, it would be like if we did Ramba. Uh, so so it was intentional. Uh, we did want to do Paplu, and so we wanted to recreate that figure's original card back expression. Uh, even though the card depicts Ramba, that's basically our guiding principle for doing characters from the original 96. Uh, in the case you mentioned, you're exactly right. We did Zutton, uh, so we were aiming to do Zutton. Um, and, and when I when we revealed it, I think we said kind of that that was more original 96 adjacent. It wasn't checking off an original 96 spot. Um, obviously, as we know, that original Kenner card back depicts uh, Zutmore, uh, who's an option for the future. And so if we did Zutmore, we would stay true to that original Kenner card back, just like we did with Paplu. Uh, since Zutton was not in the original, and I'm sure I'm just telling you stuff you know already, uh, but uh, in case any of your readers or listeners don't, uh, Zutton was obviously not in that original Kenner line. So we basically considered it as a new expression for the vintage collection with a new card back. And so again, it would be like if we did Ramba in the line, although obviously in that case, we could or would probably leverage the film out from the Power of the Force figure. Uh, so when the time comes to do Zutmore, just like with Paplu, we'll match that original card back. But that is, to your point, our guiding principle. When we do an original Kenner 96 figure, we're paying homage to that original uh, film out, that original execution. Sounds good. So we might still get Zutmore. Uh, he's definitely an option for the future, yeah. But but you're right. If we did him, it would be distinct from, from Zutton. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. All righty. Uh, Brandon. Uh, which figure among the latest reveals was the most challenging to execute? Um, so uh, of the most recent reveals, uh, the it was probably the Kenner Deco program, um, specifically uh, Obi Wan and the Jawa, um, because they had such distinct looks, uh, and there are so many kind of firsts there for the Kenner program. Uh, with Obi-Wan being a human character with an actual face, how, how would we execute that? Do we want to include uh, the vinyl cape with that character in, sp uh, in particular? Um, what things to change on him? What things to keep with the Black Series? Um, one of the things we did decide to change was to kind of, I guess, pay homage to that original lightsaber um, with uh, having it be just completely opaque blue. Um and, and, and instead of kind of translucent. Um, and then with the Jawa in particular, we were originally looking at um, the vinyl cape for him, but unfortunately the the way that that character is constructed with the um, belt that he has, that's directly connected to the rifle. Um, the vinyl cape ended up really interrupting and interfering with that rifle. Um, and it was just something that that didn't really lend itself all that well to that execution. And luckily the Kenner program also did a normal fabric cape for or normal fabric robes for him. So we were still able to stay accurate, but also make sure that it didn't really interfere with the aesthetics of the character as you're posing him out. Um, so those were, there was just a lot of discussions around those in particular. Thank you, Paul. No problem. All righty, we're going to go speed round for our final round here. So Jake, final question. Okay. Of the 13 items showcased on the live stream event, only two of them consist of all new sculpts with the rest of them either repaints or included some newly sculpted parts. Uh, should collectors of Black Series and Vintage Collection expect in the future for Hasbro to maximize their molds and sculpts with more repaints and reissues, especially when it comes to retail exclusives? I think you've kind of addressed uh, this throughout the interview kind of already, but any additional thoughts? Yeah, I think kind of to your specific question about maximizing the molds and sculpts, I think we'll definitely do that where it makes sense for the fans, right? So like Phantom Menace card backs, obviously those have, those have done well. I think they're, they were the top sellers in the UK, I heard, you know, on Amazon for a week. So like clearly there's interest there. Uh, we've seen this in our 40th anniversary lines, so, you know, wearing the shirt. So like that packaging is so important. If it if it if it's fun for fans and if it brings value for them, like we'll definitely reuse those molds. But we're not just looking to to reuse them for the sake of reusing them. Uh, but and the only other thing I would say is again, these are all really a bonus to the line. They don't in any way take the spot of new uh, figures. So if, if if you don't like them, that's totally fine. Uh, and just you can rest assured knowing that they're not subbing out for anything else. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely, Dan. 
Uh, my question is kind of similar to Jake's, actually. It's uh, about the Best Buy exclusive Phantom Menace cards. Uh, why just release uh, repacks with slight updates and not give us new figures? Yep, absolutely. And I think, again, uh, we just restate, we're, we're, we're still giving you kind of the, the same number of new figures. These are really a bonus to the line. Very cool. Absolutely. Uh, Jose? Are you going to include the 15th anniversary logo in the retro collection? And or the 2021 retro collection will be only with the Mandalorian characters without any other figures from other Star Wars movies. Absolutely, yeah. So, so the Mandalorian characters that we announced uh, last year, uh, those those are separate from the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary. And uh, again, to kind of to an earlier question, we'll always be very kind of transparent about what is and is not included in part of that. Um, that being said, retro obviously, like we launched it a, only a couple of years ago now, but it's really taken off. Uh, obviously, we've heard kind of newer fans like it with the throwback stylings, but. Uh, existing fans also love kind of that mashup. I think someone mentioned that earlier of like the old and the new. Um, and so, you know, we definitely have not seen the last of retro. Uh, might be part of the Lucasfilm 50th, uh, might be otherwise, but uh, I know we're all excited for more retro in the future. Cool. All righty, Victoria. Thank you. All right, so you kind of answered my fifth question. So I'm going to kind of uh, hope it's okay if I change it a little bit. Go rogue, um, absolutely. So so your CEO just said that last year, 70 uh, Star Wars sales were up 70%. Um, what do you think that that will mean for the future of the Star Wars line? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Uh, he said that's so that's public. We're, we're all excited about it. Obviously, like we are, you know, we're true believers in Star Wars. We, we've loved the brand like from our youth and now it's a dream working on it. And so we, we've always believed in Star Wars, even, you know, in the years when it wasn't up 70%. Uh, obviously, we've been so excited about the announcements uh, coming out of Disney and Lucasfilm the past few months. Uh, we think the future is amazing. Uh, you know, I said on the live stream that we'll see, and I'm choosing my words carefully, for the vintage collection, what, you know, in 2021, since the relaunch, we should see more new figures than in any year since the relaunch. Uh, yeah, it's exciting times. We're excited for what's to come. Uh, and I think as long as that uh, excitement is there from the fans, and as long as we keep the conversation going, I think that'll continue. Awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Brandon, bring us home. All right. Is the uh, Kenner Deco program an occasional when it makes sense to do kind of program or is it a new expression we'll see more often? So it, at least at the moment, I mean, obviously we've done uh, the, uh, the, um, I got the Boba Fett figure that we did la uh, the other or a few years ago. We also did um, the Zuckus and Forlom. Woo! And now we are, <laughs> exactly. we have these new characters that we just revealed. It's one of those things where it it's definitely a when it makes sense to do them sort of a thing, at least at the moment. Um, it's something that we would like to continue to do if, if fans are excited by these and like these. And if they do well, it's something that we would definitely uh, like to continue. I think they're a really fun expression um, it really just comes down to what characters do we have available and do they have a big enough difference in um, the Kenner look to warrant um, an, an update in the Kenner styling. Some of the colors are actually pretty accurate from those and they wouldn't look that different. Right. So um, some of them, though, look very, very different. Uh, Greedo was a great example. He He is a completely new color and color scheme to him. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you. No problem. Awesome. So I'll just say thank you sincerely to all you guys uh, for joining us. Uh, you know, we love doing these. It's fun to be able to kind of ignore our, you know, email and our meetings for a few hours <laughs> and just geek out about Star Wars. So thank you for uh, allowing us the time to do this. And, you know, also, I hopefully this has been helpful for you. It's also really helpful for us. Obviously, the questions you guys ask are, are the questions that are most important to the fan community right now. And, you know, I've taken a few notes and we, we literally do take this stuff back and put it into action as we, we try to kind of drive things moving forward. So thank you for taking the time. I know we're in different countries in different time zones and it might be early or late, uh, but really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to doing it again sometime soon. Yeah. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.